thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us again with your spirit, and we give you thanks. And we give you thanks, and we give you thanks, and we give you thanks. In Christ's name, amen. Good morning, amen. all. Welcome with us. Amen. We Hi. Grateful to be opening the word of God this day. Um, mm. Bring peace, victory, and through us. And I'm, uh, I'm messing with my internet settings here. There we go. And there we go. So we are... We are proceeding toward the cross, but before you get to the cross, you have to go through these uh, legal, both Jewish and Roman trials. And um, and it, <laughs> these are illegal trials because, because they're meeting in the middle of the night. Um, but they there don't- There wasn't anything right about any of them. They were illegal on, on many counts. That's right. Couldn't uh, you couldn't take the uh, 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 testimony of the accused was not admissible against him, and uh, the high priest had to be wearing robes. He tore the robes. I mean, it just goes on and on. There's just nothing legal about any of them, any of the trials, either before uh, either the Jewish trials, which were at um, Annas's house, the former high priest Caiaphas's palace that you know, the current high priest and the Sanhedrin yeah. um, they were all it was just pure kangaroo court the whole way That's right. uh, it, it, even if he was accused he shouldn't have been uh, sentenced until the following day they literally have a day to sleep on what their verdict was That's right. he was sen sentenced immediately and, ex and, and executed immediately it was just, it was just wall to wall uh, illegal that's right. Okay, so we're going to be in Amplified for the first reading anyway. We're in Matthew 26, good morning all, and we're down in 59. 59. Um, kind of, the section kind of starts at 57, Jesus before Caiaphas. I'm sorry, thank you. You're right. 57. 57. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, Matthew 26, 57 in the Amplified. Those who had seized Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, the current high priest, where the scribes and elders, Sanhedrin uh, Jewish high court, had gathered illegally together. Yeah, you're supposed to have that court in uh, their uh, Sanhedrin courtroom, not in the home of the high priest. That's right. Uh, actually, it brought him to um, Annas first. Yes. Uh, but, uh, uh, and uh, hey, Matt. Um, and uh, then to Caiaphas, yes. and then finally to the before the Sanhedrin. Right. Um, the other Gospels, uh, specific, specifically um, Luke, point that out. Yes. Um, at any rate, they were illegal. Yes. Picking up in verse uh, verse uh, fifty eight. But Peter followed him at a distance as far as the courtyard of the elegant home of the Jewish high priest and went inside and sat with the guards to see the outcome. Okay. So um, they've gathered illegally for the trial that they need to publicly crucify Christ with, but they aren't empowered to do crucifixion. They have to make a case that is saleable to the Romans. And um, they've gathered illegally. This is just a, a kangaroo court. This is men in power doing what they want to do illegally to get done what they want to get done. Um, yep, exactly. So we see we see the uh, the mob grabbing Jesus and the disciples scattering. That's when they have all scattered, even including. Um, uh, John, who wrote the Gospel of John, uh, get, they get back together eventually. But as the mob is leading the Lord Jesus away, the crowd is scattered. So they take the mob takes him to. Um, so Ananias is the high priest of <laughs> of a few years ago, but he's still been dispelled by the Roman Empire. The commentary says, 
but he still has power in the Jewish community. And then they take him to Tyus house and they've gathered enough of the, <coughs> the, the Sanhedrin together to justify in their own mind that what they're doing is legally binding. Right. But Peter follows him at a distance as far as the courtyard. So, okay, we think about this in terms of big spaces. It's not big spaces. All of this stuff is is crushed into the Temple Mount area. Okay, so uh, Peter follows along to see what's happening, and he's hanging out with the guards outdoors to see what is happening inside. Okay. Yep. Yeah, uh, verse 59. Yes. Now the chief priests and the whole council, that is the Sanhedrin, the Jewish high court, tried to get false witnesses to testify against Jesus so that they might have a reason to put him to death. They found none, even though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and testified Let's that this man... That. So the Jewish council has been thinking about killing off Jesus, it, it seems forever, for, for months. And you would have thought that they would have had the false witnesses all lined up, all queued up as to what they needed to say, exactly needed to say, to get approval to take this trial to the to the Roman leadership. They can't. And they can't. Well, because this is the undoing of the scapegoat mechanism. Yes. Because usually when they stone people, remember the parable? Yep. When I read this in a book, whereas uh, they were going to stone the woman who was caught doing yep. adultery. Yes. And they all pick up their stones, they're all going to stone her. And then they ask Jesus, you know, should we stone this woman? And <laughs> let he who has not sinned cast the first stone. Yes. So Jesus would have to throw the first stone, but he's not going to. Of course. So the way it works is that the person who gets enraged and throws the first stone, the second person goes, hey, he threw a stone. I'm less angry. I'll throw a stone. And the third person is a trendsetter. Hey, let's throw some stones. It's a cool new thing. And then the seventh person feels nothing. They, yeah. they get convinced that this is the story, that this person is guilty. Yes. And this is the supernatural power of God making sure that when Jesus sacrifices himself, no one, no man, and no claim can spot the perfect, clean lamb. There you go. Mm -hmm. this yeah. man, I'm able to tear down the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. But it's true. <laughs> <laughs> he said that, and... It is true. <laughs> and then 62, Rich? Uh, the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, have you no answer to give? What is this these men are testifying against you? But Jesus kept silent. Uh, in fulfillment of the scripture, read um, that's right out of Isaiah 53. Amen. Uh, and the uh, high priest said to him, I call you. I call on you to swear a binding oath by the living God that you tell us whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Wow. Jesus said to him, yeah, Jesus said to him, you have, in fact, said it <laughs> yourself. <laughs> I'm throwing in yourself. Other versions do, too. Uh, um, uh, Jesus, yeah, said that. Like you have said, just like you said it. Yeah. It, but it's true. You said, you said it. <laughs> yeah. But it does say 64. Yeah. Jesus said to him, you have in fact said it. But more than that, I tell you, regardless of what you do with me now, in the future, you will see me as revealed as the son of man seated at the right hand of, the, of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Would that not enrage you if yes. you were like a Jew and you didn't believe? It still enrages people. <laughs> wow. I mean, uh, he says, so what you say just out of your mouth is true. But I tell you, even more than that, you'll see me coming in power and glory, radiating from heaven itself, and they lose their mind. <laughs> well, you yeah. would. 
right? Yeah. With us, we're like, oh, the war's over. He's here. <laughs> and for them, they're like, what yeah. in the hell? This punk, this little scrub from Galilee is telling me this stuff. Oh, boy, the wrath is coming now. That's right. <laughs> yep. Verse 65, then the high priest tore his robes in mock horror and exclaimed, he has blasphemed by making himself God's equal. What further need have we of witnesses or evidence? See, you have now heard it, uh, heard the blasphemy from me, from him. Uh, what do you think? They answered, he deserves to be put to death. Oh, uh, wow. <laughs> How amazing. He okay. deserves to be put to death. What? He is the Christ. He is the Messiah. And he is not blasphemed because what he has said is true and will be forever true. This is very critical. This is the inversion of the scapegoat mechanism. Yep. And it begins here with a lie. Oh. It's the lie that kills Christ. And when he comes back and he reveals himself to his followers, that's what undo the old undid the old world. The scapegoat mechanism doesn't work anymore. We can't have the lie that the scapegoat did it, and <laughs> because he did not. That's right. But it's just weird. It's just, it's just, this is just like the power of 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 God using how dark and evil we've been for good. That's right. You know, to temporarily put this veil of of, of guilt over uh, Jesus. Because how could how could you really even think he was guilty? He's so wonderful. If you look into <laughs> his eyes. Yes. You know? I mean geez. Can I have paper towels, please? Yes. So this is the line that sets us free. Yes. Mm. And sixty-seven? Yeah. Uh deserves to be put to death. Then they spat in his face and struck him with their fists. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ. Messiah, anointed, who was it that struck you? Okay, so Definitely. this is illegal, this is illegal, and this is illegal. They have yeah. violated their own custom and their own culture. Um, uh, and, and they have blasphemed here. Um, yeah. They have declared that the Christ is not the Christ and that their their kangaroo court is a higher authority than the creator of the universe mm -hmm. prophesy yep. us you christ who was it who struck you now really 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 they don't want the answer to this because the striking striking a a defendant is illegal but striking the christ is is judge i mean when you stand before judgment and you said, what did you do? Well, I struck the Christ. Um, now, on the cross, he said, forgive them. They know not what they do. But their, 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 their livelihood, their, their lineage is at risk here, striking the Christ and then mocking him with it. Um, well, I can understand why they want to do it, but because it was what I was saying previously, they kind of know that they're killing the son of god uh -huh. but it's not it's not a fully realized live through thing yeah they kind of get it a little bit but they haven't walked and talked with jesus for months if they did they couldn't do this well, but so what they're doing it's the scapegoat mechanism they're they're kind of trying to overcome it <clears throat> and and do what they want to do because they they for their sake of their lives their power and their existence they really have to kill jesus because he's going to undo all it and they okay. can't take it so i'm wondering like with this this is a question for you who are more knowledgeable um these people have they overseen or participated in stonings they have participated them they have overseen them yes yeah yeah because that's with this in the modern world i think it's very critical for us to understand that in the ancient world everyday citizens would participate in martial punishment yes so there, this is the juices going. They're they're revving up the old stoning juices. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 this mechanism, because it's been undone. Yeah. We have such a concern for victims that now it's like that's what all this like cancels up is. We're mad 
with concern for victims. Right. But with them, they saw a victim and they're like, oh, it's time to release that negative energy. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. then they all just kill somebody in the street. And then it feels so good. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. what they're anticipating, the relief and the pleasure they're going to feel when this guy dies. And also, like, in a way that the Romans, that's the same thing with them. Why did they have crucifixion? This was the scapegoat mechanism to maintain the uh, social violence of their their uh, ruled people. That's right. So they, they perfected it. It's like days of just, whoa, look at that bastard die. Yeah. And it calms mm. everybody down. So this mm. is the great cathartic release that they expect to get, which will be completely undone yes. when he comes back from the dead and they'll be left... It'll it'll suck everything out of them, and the whole old world will collapse. That's right. Even even before the resurrection, we see the world collapsing. I mean, the executioner looking up and watching the darkness and the thunder and the lightning, and mm -hmm. said, "Truly, this was the Son of God." Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the just yeah, <laughs> amazing amazing passage. Rich, why don't you try it in New Living from 50, 51 to 67, please? New Living? Please. Okay, new Living, I've got uh, Contemporary English, and I've got The Message. I've got uh, New Living up here right now. Uh, yeah, red letter, no less. Yeah. Beginning of 57, the same account. Matthew 26, 57, living, New Living Translation. Then the people who arrested Jesus led him to the home of Caiaphas. Again, it really went to <laughs> Annas first and then Caiaphas, but that's... Um, Rich, go up to 55, please. 55. Okay. Uh, let's see. Then Jesus said to the crowd, am I some dangerous revolutionary that you came with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why did you arrest me at the temple? I was there teaching every day. But this is all happening to fulfill the words of the prophets as recorded in the scriptures. At this point, uh, the disciples deserted him and fled. That's the scripture that pertains to strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. Yeah. Um, and 57, as we said, uh, they brought him to Caius, Caiaphas' home. That, I believe, I think Annas and Caiaphas had homes nearby each other. Yes. Uh, if Annas was in Caiaphas's home at the time, I think that'd be unusual because they really weren't expecting this. They did not want this to happen on Passover and <laughs> certainly not in the middle of the night. <laughs> this is all, this is radically illegal. So this, you know, they're, ta they're taken somewhat aback, I think, by this Caiaphas and so forth. Uh, but nonetheless, it's, it's underway, so they got to follow through with it. Yes. Um, I think that's a summary of the situation. Um, so teachers religious of law were gathered. So somehow they got word to these guys that uh, they were coming, and here they are. Uh, 58. Meanwhile, Peter followed him at a distance and came to the high priest's courtyard. He went in and sat with the guards and waited to see how it would all end. The trials, that is. Uh, inside, whoops, let's see. Yep. Oh, there it is. Inside, the leading priests and the entire uh, high council were trying to find witnesses who would lie about Jesus so they could put him to death. But even though they found many who agreed to give false witness, they could not use anyone's testimony. Finally, two men came forward and declared, this man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Of course, he meant the temple, uh, his body as such, um, but they took it as the building. Verse 62, then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, well, aren't you going to answer these charges? What do you have to say for yourself? But Jesus remained silent. And again, that's uh, Isaiah 53. Then the high priest said to him, I demand in the name of the living God, tell us if you are the Messiah, the son of God. Jesus replied, you've said it. And in the future, you will see the son of man seated in the place of power at God's right hand and coming in the clouds of heaven. 
Then the high priest tore his, uh, his uh, clothing to show his horror and said, blasphemy. Why do we need further witnesses? You have heard it, uh, heard this blasphemy. What is your verdict? Guilty, they shouted. He deserves to die. <laughs> then they began to spit in Jesus' face and beat him with their fists. Some slapped him, jeering, prophesy to us, you Messiah, who hit you that time? Wow. No, they, uh, they, were, they were finely woven. You really had to, really had to work at it to tear it. Now, they, they had, a, a, I mean, yes, it, it wasn't superhuman strength that tore it, but it was a pretty substantial amount of of ripping and tearing to get that done. Yeah, uh, yeah, because that's like that. Just in the Bible, when you see that, you're like, "All right, that just ruined their clothes." They did. <laughs> you know, it's they like, ruined their priestly clothes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. They get a whole staff to make them a new wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, amazing guilt that we would lay on the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Sanhedrin, but <laughs> Christ. Christ did not die because of the Jews. He did not die because of the Romans. He died because of me. <coughs> so to blame Jews and to blame Romans. And throughout history, people have blamed, well, it was those Jews that killed Christ. Well, it was those Romans that killed Christ. But really, he went to the cross for my sin and for yours. Well, he changed the world. He did. And you cannot change it. Back. You can't. <laughs> You can't unsee this. You can't undo this. That's right. This has been a truth that has been spread throughout the world for 2,000 years. And mm -hmm. it is so deep <laughs> that if you really, really look, you can understand what's happening in terms of, of this one truth. Amen. That, that we, uh -huh. can't, this, we can't deny the evil in ourselves. We yeah. can't. Jesus just says, you, you killed an innocent man. Yes. More so than that, this man was the son of God. Amen. And you can't, if you, if you'll believe he's the son of God, you gotta believe that an innocent man was killed. Amen. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for going to the cross for us. We thank you that you bore our sin and our guilt and our sorrow. Oh, transform us, O oh Lord, that we can live radiant lives, radiating your love, peace, and power. In Christ's name, amen. 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 Yes, thank you again, Lord, for these, uh, uh, the detail of this, uh, these accounts uh, that we see uh, how intricate uh, these situations uh, coming alive from the Old Testament prophecies in in uh, just amazing detail these things that would come together after centuries of carrying carrying the books and and realizing these statements to see them come to pass uh regardless of the will of the men involved uh orchestrated perfectly by the lord himself yes. to bring about his own sacrifice his self-sacrifice to atone for the sins of the world. Yes. Uh, his ministry fulfilled according to John the Baptist, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin. Yeah. What he had to go through to get there, oh. how this is so engineered uh, <laughs> to come out exactly on time and exactly as specified. Yes. We marvel at the uh, precision of it all and the passion the love that you showed forth through this entire endeavor uh, is matchless uh, without, without uh, any comparison whatsoever to anything, uh, any act of love ever performed before or since. We thank you for it in Yeshua's name. Amen. Uh, thank you, Lord, for the coming moment of great inversion, yeah. the high and the low point of the story of the cosmos and i'd just like to thank you for <laughs> saving us from the shrill accusations of long-haired prophets and replacing that with the quiet comfort of the 
most holy, holy, holy ghost. Yes. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Blessings to you all. Amen. Yep.